Ugh, don't call me that horrible. It's too confusing. Sock. A talking sock. Jeez, uh, what is it already? <gasps> What's going on? Have I died and gone to clothes heaven along with you, the ghost of a glove? I am Master Hand! You, you have, have been, been chosen. chosen. Master Hand? Oh, good grief. I'm too young to fight in Smash Bros. You're, You're not, not going, going to, to fight, fight in Smash, Smash Brothers Sock. Sock. You, you are, are going, going to create the next, next Smash Brothers. Brothers. What? Really? I must be dreaming. Somebody pinch me. Wait, no, no, no! Super Smash Bros. is a very special series to me. I understand this isn't an uncommon sentiment among gamers, but I really do owe its existence to my wider fascination with the gaming industry. I do have to say though, comparing the first three Smash games to the latest three Smash games, there's something the old has that the new just kinda doesn't. Don't get me wrong, I love Smash for 3DS, Wii U, and Ultimate, but they don't hit quite the same as 64 Melee or Brawl. Not in a drastic way like the first three Paper Marios compared to the latest three, but there's definitely a disparity in the way they feel. Most of this comes down to scale and timing. The Smash Bros. brand and Nintendo's willingness to play ball with other companies and vice versa hadn't become what it is now by the time of Brawl's release. Brawl, and especially Melee, had this all-encompassing mission of bringing Nintendo's worlds and characters to the modern age. Examining this phenomenon could make for a unique video all its own, but that's not what we're doing today. Today, I'll be going over an outline for my own Smash Bros. game, kind of like how Scott the Waz did that one time. Except, Except less, less funny. funny. Pretty much, yeah. You're probably curious as to why I started off by identifying a disparity between the first and last three Smash games feels, right? Well, the reason I did was to preemptively soften the blow of what will be one of the defining distinguishers of my proposed Smash game compared to the rest. It's not something that could altogether bring back the feel of the first three Smash games, but it could come close. That distinguisher is as follows. Cut every third party. And the base game. Literally everything. The guest trophies and stickers, the guest stages, the guest music, the guest characters, cut it all from every corner without impunity. No matter how closely tied to Nintendo. Bayonetta? Gone. Banjo-Kazooie? Gone. Even, Even the, the Lotus, Lotus and Nada, and Nada spirits, spirits from, from Warframe? Warframe? Even the Lotus and Nada spirits from Warfare. No! no. Yes! But, but we, we gotta, gotta keep, keep the Sakura, Sakura of Rice and Ruin spirits, spirits though, though, right? right? Tell, Tell me, me we, we gotta, gotta keep, keep the Sakura, Sakura of Rice and Ruin, Ruin spirits! spirits. We cut the Sakura of Rice and Ruin Spirits too. No! Yes! You, you animal. animal! Yes! Now I don't make this choice because I'm a Nintendo purist or have any sort of animosity toward third party stuff in Smash, but because I believe that in overreaching for as many quote unquote impossible guests as possible in later entries, Smash Bros all but abandoned the initial spirit of modernizing and celebrating Nintendo's worlds and history the way Melee and Brawl did. How cool are these Melee trophies of characters not seen since the NES days as 3D models? How cool is it that Melee marked the first time any of the characters featured in its roster were shown in higher detail than an N64 model or SNES sprite? How cool is it that Brawl had its own art style that every character would adhere to? How cool is it that Brawl introduced assist trophies and resurrected really obscure characters in the same art style as the playable characters? How cool is it that both of these games have pre-rendered intro movies, and in Brawl's case cutscenes, that show off these characters interacting, and action set pieces from their games all under unified modern graphical styles? True, a new Smash game could do all of this while still keeping SOME third-party characters. Asterisk. But the way I see it, not every guest from Ultimate can return. Legally, sustainably, or otherwise, it's just not feasible. Sakurai himself has alluded to this reality in his final Famitsu column. Now see, I could very easily say, no sweat, keep the good ones, cut the bad. But that all comes down to opinion. And Smash fans are just so great at respectfully sharing their opinions. Sarcasm aside, something Smash fans actually are great at is coming up with justifications and rules for what goes into Smash and what doesn't. Regardless of how any of us feel about this phenomenon, it's undeniable. So I figure it'd be easier for Smash players to accept the cutting of beloved third-party characters from a future Smash title if it was established as a rule. For this game, mind you, Smash will probably continue forever so we can consider the stipulation of mine as a one-time thing in an oddball entry. So with the cutting slash forbidding of any character, stages, music, or otherwise from non-Nintendo IPs in my hypothetical Smash game, what are we left with? The answer 
returning to the old-fashioned Smash spirit of adapting and elevating Nintendo series as though they were all equals. At least in terms of being celebrated or represented in Smash. Franchises like F-Zero and Mother, despite being around since the beginning of the Smash series, only seem to get less and less attention Smash 4 and onwards. One could argue that's because they hadn't received any new games between the time of Brawl and Smash 4, but then I remind you Game & Watch Nice Climbers still at least got new stages and music in Brawl and were added to Melee at all in the first place. But even aside from bolstering what's already veteran in Smash, there are still plenty of other franchises that have great things to offer a new game aside from PNGs of old manual artwork. How about a Wave Race stage? Or a Captain Rainbow Assist trophy? Or new items like the Game Builder Garage Nodons? Or some Rhythm Heaven trophies that actually portray the characters in 3D? How about remixes of songs in any or even every series aside from their respective main themes and the like? Okay, hang on, let me catch my breath. <sighs> Let's stay on something of a structured track here. I will now proceed to go over the ideas and concepts for my hypothetical Smash game category by category. Starting with everyone's favorite... The, the user, user Interface! interface. Uh, no, I've really got nothing to say on that front. I'm, I'm starting to get, get cold feet on this arrangement. arrangement. You're a hand. You're, You're a, a hand! hand. Touché. As I said before, no third parties. That should go without saying by now. But either way. If you'd like a detailed deep dive into my thought process behind slimming down Ultimate's roster while still introducing plenty of newcomers, you can check out the highlights of a stream I did a while back where I did just that. The roster I came up with there ended up looking like this. Now this isn't what I believe would be the perfect roster or something, but it does exemplify the sort of thing I'm going for. No third party, at least not before DLC. No, or close to no, Echo Fighters. No one series getting a metric ton more characters than any other series. And the amount of characters in the base roster would be a little more or less than the amount of characters in Smash 4. Many veterans would remain virtually unchanged in how they play, some would be completely reworked as though they were newcomers. But now that I bring up how some characters play, I see now that this would be the perfect opportunity to segue into talking about the gameplay. If it weren't for the fact I'm going to talk about the stages first. Lo -lo 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 -lo. Now I'm not going to go into many specific stages I'd like to see return or be added, but what I will do is lay down what in my mind is the way I'd go about picking them. Firstly, there has to be at least one stage per series that features playable characters. Secondly, there should also be a healthy amount of stages that represent series that don't have playable characters in the game. And on the whole, can we please save the whole stages that retain their debut look thing for very special occasions? A Game Boy stage that takes you through some iconic levels from a variety of hit Game Boy games would be rad. A Kirby's Dream Land stage that presents one-to-one -one adaptations of Game Boy levels is pretty underwhelming. Same with F-Zero's Mute City from Smash 3DS, or the Duck Hunt Balloon Fight in Mario Bros. stages. It'd be so much more interesting to see these environments recreated in 3D and adhering to a consistent art style, as opposed to seeing them look as they always have, but now with 3D characters fighting in them. Anyway, now let's talk about the gameplay. Lo -lo 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 -lo. Wait! You need to talk about the items first. Oh, uh, I don't actually have much to say about the items. Nothing, Nothing at all? Are you going, going to, cut to cut them? Oh, no, 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 no. Gunpies, ghost, no. I guess the only guideline I'd want followed is to generally make sure the items actually come from existing games and series and cut back on the ones that are just sort of things, you know? Like, like the, the home run, run bat? bat? Call it the Wii Sports Bat. The, the ray, ray gun? gun? Make it an NES zapper. Sandbag? Sandbag can stay. Now if there's one thing about the mainline Smash Bros series that has remained relatively consistent and probably shouldn't be altered too much, it's the gameplay. I'm thinking it should remain mostly unchanged from how it was in Ultimate, but I do think it'd be a fun idea to introduce some new moves or mechanics to the general gameplay to spice it up just a tad. Like a tag team mechanic whereby a certain button or button combo swaps any two selected characters in a manner similar to Zelda and Sheik of old. I can see this tag mechanic being central to the identity of the game, similarly to Dual Racers in Mario Kart Double Dash. More so than the omission of third-party stuff in the base roster, because that's not really a selling point, is it? But that's just one suggestion. I'm not married to the idea, it's not really a high-priority aspect I'd be looking for in a new entry. But being tasked with conceptualizing a brand new unique entry in the Smash series, I do feel compelled to share that yes, the formula can be experimented with without losing its core unction. Oh, and just by the by, if this game were to adopt the whole tag team shtick as its central theme, I'd make the game title Super Smash Bros. Match Set. It's a perfect double entendre. Both match and set can refer to pairs of things, and the phrase match set denotes a fight being decided. I'm telling you, this is on the same level as WarioWare Get It Together. It's got real potential. 
On the regular multiplayer Smash side of things, again, keep it relatively unchanged from how Ultimate handles it. Free for all, team battle, squad strike, tourney, the works. Oh, and Smash Run from 3DS was kinda interesting, but somewhat lacking, honestly. I feel similarly towards Smash Tour from Wii U. I actually like that mode quite a bit, actually. My siblings prefer playing it more than Ultimate, if you can believe it. I think combining the two, in a sense, would behoove them both. Let's call this new mode Smash Tour Run, or maybe Smash Run Tour, why not? And all of it, all of it, should be playable online with friends and strangers. Boom. On the single player side of things, like I said, bring in something like Subspace Emissary, a mode with a narrative, cutscenes, or at least talking head interactions, dedicated levels and challenges, enemies, boss battles, character recruitment that also unlocks them in the rest of the game, the whole nine yards. I don't know if I care one way or the other whether or not the locations are mostly original like Brawl or plucked straight out of existing universes like Melee. In fact, I might be the minority that actually kinda likes the deep lore of the characters being Indian in the cupboard style toys that all share this world created in the mind of someone playing pretend with them and the subtext of evil forces being intrusive thoughts and pressures of the aging Peter Pan to stop playing with them. But either way. The important thing about this mode would be making sure it's fun to play, worth revisiting on some level whether through collectibles, rewarding exploration or otherwise, and being full to bursting with cool interactions between the characters. Aside from this adventure mode, classic mode should also come back close to how it was in Ultimate. All-Star mode should return too, but more akin to how it was in Brawl or Smash 4. Events should return too, and spoilers, they would for the most part take the place of spirit battles, but we'll unpack that later. Okay, what else? Home run contest, race to the finish, multi-man matches, ooh, break the targets needs to come back, but this time, find a good middle ground between Melee's personalized per character levels and Brawl's difficulty based ones. Like maybe have the stages each be based on Nintendo consoles, yeah, that'd be fun. Now there's certainly more modes to cover, but that'd be under the next category. Smash Ultimate discarded trophies in favor of spirits. I, and many other Smash fans, definitely prefer trophies. In my Smash game, they coexist. The trophies will return in all their glory as 3D models of characters, items, locations, or whatever that each come with brief descriptions just as they've always been. Spirits will return, but this time around, they'll have a new name. Stickers. Wait, Wait a, a minute. minute. That, that sounds, sounds familiar. familiar. Yes, yes, I thought it might. Stickers are those things they put on fruit at the grocery store. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. I've, I've heard, heard of, of those, those before. before. Yeah. yeah, well, some stickers resemble characters' items or whatever, and they're typically used to decorate things by small children, people who own hydro flasks, and weeaboos who don't want their cars to have resale value. Spirits, now called stickers, will function almost the same as they did in Ultimate, but now come with the added bonus of making more contextual sense in another returning vault mode, the gallery. In the gallery, you can edit screenshots you take when pausing the game with filters, frames, paint, etc., but also stickers! Yay! And of course, a mode wherein you can place your trophies in a diorama environment for the express purpose of taking photos will also be present in the vault and be 100% compatible with the gallery's editing features too. Now where do you get trophies and stickers? Well, pretty much in most of the game's various modes as per usual, but the vault should also bring with it a special mode specifically designed to eat your in-game coins for the purpose of unlocking this stuff. Melee had Lottery, Brawl had Coin Launcher, and my Smash game will have Arcade. This mode would take some of the lifeblood of Brawl and Smash 4's masterpieces, only in this game, you pay a certain amount of coins to play for a certain amount of time, and it'd be structured like WarioWare, with the games tasking you with quick objectives then moving on to other games. Messing up might eat some of your time, doing well might earn you a little extra time here and there. I don't know, I think it'd be fun. It could do wonders for giving players a chance to really engage with the Smash cast's history. Oh, speaking of, the last notable mode in the vault is that of the Chronicle which would be a great big glossary that identifies and categorizes every character, item, location, and game slash media reference in the whole game. Not like Brawl's laundry list of every single Nintendo published game for some reason, but a bona fide lexicon of all the deep lore stuff referenced in the game itself. And that, in a nutshell, covers the content I'd set out to put in a new Super Smash Bros. game. It may seem a little extra ambitious in some areas, and maybe also comparatively tame when compared to its ultimate predecessor, but for my money, this is the sort of Smash Bros. game that could stand to remind me why I fell in love with the series in the first place. And, and so you, you have, have said it. it. So, so soon, soon it shall be! The power, the power is coursing, coursing through my celestial digits, digits and dispersing into the aether. aether. Feel, Feel the eminence as I gesticulate unfathomable splendor unto the cosmos! An, An awesome, awesome gasp, gasp of invention has been shortly stifled and has presently mellowed into a serene yet magnificent sigh of creation. Are, Are you ready, ready to, to behold, behold it, Sock? The, the Smash Bros. Bros. game made by and for you. Yes, 
Yes. Yes! Sounds like you heard the good news too. Who would have thought the real solution to global warming was the friends we made along the way? <laughs> Thank you for watching, and special thanks as always to my Patreon supporters. For as little as $1 a month, you could get a credit here at the end of my videos, as well as other exclusive perks, as well as just supporting the show more than YouTube probably ever will. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, please like it, comment down below if you've got anything to say, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already for more content like this, uh, just like this every month, but this summer also introducing, or should I say reintroducing, uh, some something a little different, not too different, it's fun. Fun, focused, short, sweet, simple. I, I, if you're on the Patreon, you already know. So hey, there's a, oh, there's a plug. Oh. But in all seriousness, I have been working on a ton of new stuff for this channel at the same time that I've been working on this, and I can't wait for you all to see it. Uh, if you're on the Patreon, you may have seen some behind-the-scenes glimpses at some of that stuff already. I'll see you next time I see ya. Yeah.